Mary from Kid Made Modern, where we celebrate all of our kiddos' creativity. Today, our special guest is our friend Kristen. Kristen is the founder of Treehouse Kid and Craft in Georgia. She has a super fun craft that she's doing with her daughter for us today. It is inspired by 90s design, um, and it's a super fun summer activity. So um, I hope you guys have fun with Kristen. Kristen, thanks so much for joining us. It was such a treat, and we'll see you all again soon. Thanks, everyone. Hi friends, it's Kristen here from Treehouse Kid and Craft in Athens and Atlanta, Georgia. I have my studio mate, Maypop Wren, my daughter who is 11 with me today. And we are super excited to be here and share one of our favorite crafts that we came up with to celebrate summer times. We are using the studio in a box from Kid Made Modern to complete our project. It is filled with so many awesome, awesome art materials. It was, it was tough to choose what we wanted to make, but ultimately we came up with a really fun project that uses collage and we're going to make our own colored paper. Maypop, do you want to tell everybody what we were inspired by for this project? What time period? We were inspired by the 1990s. The 90s. A long time ago, right? So, a little fun fact. I grew up in the 90s. And I remember my summers filled with lots of swimming, lots of playing outside, and lots of cool bathing suits. We had the best patterns on our bathing suits. So when I was asked to come up with a summer craft, I knew exactly what I wanted to make. So yesterday, Maypop and I found some fun patterns from the 90s on the internet. Now, what do you think of when you think of the 90s? I think of a bunch of vibrant colors and shapes. Um, that's really all. Another thing, we had crazy, crazy hair. Maypop didn't want me to do my hair all crazy, but. So Maypop had, had said some really important things. She said, bold shapes and vibrant colors. And that is for sure two really important things about the 90s patterns and will help you out in this project. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples that we found on the web that will show us what we can make with our projects. So take a look at how fun this is. These patterns have a nice little backdrop on the back. And I know that I'm definitely gonna use that technique in my project. Here is another fun one. And I like that this one is a little bit different in that they kind of decorated the background of theirs instead of using a bold blank color. And here is another. So I hope that these will inspire you and get your creative juices flowing and we can get started on our project. All right, so let me quickly tell you some things that you're gonna need from your studio in the box or from items that you have at home. Maypop, do you wanna show the first? We are gonna need paint. And stu the studio in the box had some awesome colors. And we also, Maypop came up with a great idea to grab some little cups. Or it could be paper, it can be even a paper plate if you want to mix your own colors. So she had some colors that she wanted to mix that the box didn't have. So I said, go for it. Another thing that we are going to need is some sturdy paper. Now this paper came from our mixed paper pad. And that's going to be some paper that we are going to put paint on so we can make our own patterned paper, all right? 
Another important material is brushes. I grabbed some other ones that we had around the house and in the studio, but in your box, you'll, you, it comes with a, an envelope full of awesome different types of brushes. Another thing, since we're painting, we might need a little brush washing. So we got a cup of clean water in a jar, in a cup, whatever, whatever you have lying around. Another thing is paper towels. We always like to make a mess when we're making paint. And it also kind of helps us dry off our brushes, doesn't it? And May Pop, you want to show the next one? Scissors! We are going to be using our scissors to cut up our colored paper and make our cool designs. So grab some scissors. And the last thing that we have is some sort of a ribbon. Now, when we were making these pattern papers, we thought, oh, how cool would it be to make these into garland? And then we would be able to decorate our houses in our 90s garland. So if you have some sort of ribbon or twill tape or, or whatever that you can use to string up your designs, it'll look really cool. But if you don't, no biggie. You can just make a design like this and hang it right on the wall. Um, and then the last thing we're gonna need is glue, if I didn't say that. Um, I just poured a little bit of glue into a cup and I'm gonna use my brush to, um, to, to put the glue down on the paper. Um, however you want to do it. If you have a glue stick, that will also work. If you have Mod Podge, that will also work. Um, but grab something sticky like glue um, so we can make our paper. All right. Are you guys ready to get started? Awesome. I know we are. All right. Welcome back. We are here with our nice and tidy studio and we are super excited to get started so as i mentioned before i had you guys get out some thick paper i also realized that i forgot to tell you to get out some thinner paper now the thinner paper we are going to use to make our shapes so it doesn't need to be a real thick this thicker paper we are going to make our backgrounds with so it's good if it's nice and sturdy. Okay, so we can set our background pieces aside and we can get started on choosing our colors that we want to use. So I recommend everybody choosing about three to four colors. Okay, so Maypop, what colors are you going to choose? I'm going to choose blue. Okay. Pink and purple. Cool. But then okay. I'm gonna mix them with white. Okay, so Maypop's gonna do some mixing. I am gonna choose black and I'm gonna choose pink. And I I think I might mix a color too. And if so you, I might mix a little turquoise color. And if you want to use some of these these you can mix your colors together great idea and those are little stir sticks or popsicle sticks so just depending on what you like to use to mix your paints with go for it all right well it looks like we're sharing some colors okay i'm gonna start mixing some of my paint too much though because well just use the amount that you're going to use and if you're mixing your colors mix them little by little and add your colors little by little because you don't want a color that you don't like so you're just going to want to mix it little by little So, like I said, I was making a turquoise, and look at, just by adding a little bit of green to my blue, I have this awesome turquoise. I love it. Like May Pop said, you don't need a ton of this, okay? So I'm gonna show you, what, when I have my color, I'm gonna show you guys what you can do with your color. 
So what we are doing here is we are just making collage paper and we're making it with colors that we've either mixed or from the Kid Made Botter box, studio box. Now I love doing collage and I love even more doing collage when I make my own paper. I feel like when you make your own paper, you can just see the brush strokes. You can see the color looks more rich. It just, it, it makes them pop a little bit more. And it just feels good. I am going to let this turquoise dry. And as you notice, I just did half of a piece of this because we are not gonna need a ton of paper when we make our shapes, okay? All right, my turquoise is gonna sit to dry and I'm going to wash my brush. Now, when you wash your brushes, in class, we always kind of call them going through the car wash. But when you wash your brushes, you want to make sure that you get all of the color out of your brush. Because if you don't, what might happen, May Pop? Then your, color, then your colors will mix. Yes, so your colors will mix. It also is very important to dry your brush very well, okay? So I have made sure that my brush is very dry and it's ready for my next color. So I'm, my next color I'm gonna do is yellow. And what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna mix this color. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit of how I can make this paper without dirtying a whole nother cup. I can get this to come out. So I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of paint, just like a little glob of paint on my paper, straight onto my paper, okay? And I'm gonna take my clean and dry brush and I'm gonna make my paper again. How's it going, Maypop? Ooh, nice color. Great pink that you made. So Maypop, how did you make that color? I just mixed a little bit of pink and a little bit of white. Cool. Do you know what it's called when you add white to a color? What? A tint. So you just tinted your pink. It's okay if your colors, if you mix your colors a little bit where they come together, it's okay. Art is one of my favorite activities because it is so forgiving. Okay, I'm gonna, it's time for me to wash my brush again. I'm gonna dry it once again. And if you get a little splatter of another color onto your other piece of paper, it's okay. You just wipe it off and if it's dry, it shouldn't mess with much. Okay, I'm gonna do some black now. So I put a little bit more black paint down because I want my black shadows to be extra dark. And I'm actually thinking I might need a whole piece of black paper as I'm thinking about my designs in my head. 
So I'm gonna make this whole piece of paper black. So if there's any color that you know you're gonna use a lot of, you can make as much paper as you think you'll need. And if you have leftover scraps of paper, it's always fun to use these for future collages. And if you still have more pieces or space on your paper, but you don't have any more colors that you want, you can actually just blend together some of your colors and then you'll have a whole new color. Ooh, great idea, May Pop. And you can always add a little bit more paint. Like I might add a little bit more blue to this purple. It's kind of like experimenting in the kitchen. Okay, I'm gonna grab one more piece of paper because I think I would like an accent color of pink on mine. You can set your pieces aside to dry. Okay, I've got a fresh brush. I'm gonna use for my pink. Look at how vibrant this pink is, it's so good. and Maypop's gonna make her second one. And once our pages are dry, we'll pop back on and we'll show you the next step. Yep. Welcome back, friends. We are currently waiting for our pattern papers to dry, our collage papers to dry. So what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is we are gonna work on our backgrounds of our garlands. So we each have two large pieces of paper uncut that we got from our mixed paper pad. And now the mixed paper pad has a lot of different types of color. It has drawing and sketching sheets. These ones are the thicker ones and they are going to be the backs of our garland, okay? So our first step is we are gonna cut these in half, both ways. So I'm gonna go down the middle, and if it helps for you to fold it in half first, and fold it in half the other way, that works perfectly fine. Okay. So I'm going to cut right down that seam. so I know where these lines are. Okay, so if my math is right, I should have eight pieces of paper. Now, as I mentioned, these are gonna be the backs. This is gonna be our base for our garland, okay? So I'm gonna line mine up. Okay, 
And I don't know if you remember some of the examples that we had, but some of them had patterns in the back, which I thought was super cool. So I thought that I would do a pattern rather than a uh, solid color. Maypop, what are you gonna do? I'm going to do a pattern too. Cool. So, Maypop, did you have a brush you were gonna use? So Maypop's gonna use the fan brush. And the fan brush can be really cool because it can give you a pattern just with the bristles. So for my pattern in the background, I am going to have, I'm gonna create a color to use as a background color. So am I. Cool. I'm just gonna do some blue and some white and make a very light blue. So I don't want it to match my other color blue. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use a really light colored pink. And now we don't want our backgrounds to be overpowering to our collage colors. So keep that in mind when you're creating your background. Up. Yes. All right. Thank you. And you guys can have fun when you're creating these backgrounds. You guys can explore. It might also be cool to use some of the watercolors that are in your set too. But I've got this out, so I'm gonna see how this works. So at the bottom of my bristles, it kind of is a really cool pattern. I'm gonna see how that works, okay? Ooh, that looks really awesome, May Pop. So see how I kind of get a texture? This will be a really nice background. And it'll be really cool when I put my other shapes on. My first background is done. And you can do different looking backgrounds. That is so true. Those are looking really snazzy, May Pop. All right, I might do, for my final four, I might do add a little yellow. I was kind of running out of paint, but I can do whatever I want, right? When you're the artist, you can kind of make your own rules. All right, so we'll see. I think that this should be Almost like a little orangey peach color. Oh yeah, look at how nice that color turned out. Cool. I think when we are done with these, our shapes should be all done. So I might set these in a sunny spot and then we'll be able to cut out our shapes. And you can do your backgrounds. Like I'm doing this one very simple and then I'm gonna add another color to it. Very cool.
All right. So my backgrounds are done and I'm gonna set these in a sunny spot. And I'm gonna go check on my collage pieces. When you are creating these, sometimes the most awesome shapes are your scraps. So save these for future projects or maybe you'll use them on this project. I'm just gonna set those aside for a rainy day. And I cut my things in half. So now I have two repeating shapes. Kind of look like long 
monkey eats. Okay, let's see. I think I'm gonna save my backdrop or my drop shadow for the last step. And you don't have to use the black no. drop shadow. Like I'm not doing that. Sometimes if you make mistakes, those mistakes can turn out very good. Like in all art projects, you're bound to make mistakes, but sometimes my mistakes have brought me to so much discovery. Right, Mikhail? Yep. And sometimes I also get frustrated when I make a mistake. That happens too, and that's okay as well. Okay, I think that my shapes are all cut out. Now, when you have your shapes cut out, Maypop's still working on hers and that's okay. It's kind of a fun time to start playing. I don't know if you guys like playing with blocks, but I love them. Um, so right here, I'm just gonna kind of, I'm gonna do it on my black because I can see these really well. Look at, I'm gonna kind of see what kind of a pattern I might wanna create. I mean, look at how cool these look. So here's some of my plane. Now, Maypop's gonna finish up her shape cutting and we're gonna go grab our backgrounds and start collaging, all right? All right, we're back here. All of our background pieces are dry now. We're just going to pick one of them that we want to start with. And you can take some glue and start gluing on your shapes. Now at Treehouse, we, we don't like to have many rules, but we do have a rule with our glue and it's called one drop and stop. And it's so we don't have a pool of glue when we're collaging or doing our projects. So we just ask that you guys are mindful of the amount of glue that you guys are using. And also, we have a rule on our paint brushes where you want to be very careful with your paint brushes because paint brushes can easily break. So right. we say that when you're using your paint brush, you just want to pet, use it as if you're petting a kitty cat or a dog or your favorite animal. It's a great one, they have. Great reminder. So I had one of these and I realized that that took up almost my whole piece of paper. So what I did was I cut them into quarters to make them a little bit smaller, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys how I can create a drop shadow effect, okay? So I'm gonna set this shape on my black paper and I'm gonna cut around it, okay? I'm basically making a copy of it, okay? So there is that. Now watch what happens when I do that. And put it like that, and it gives it that drop shadow. Super cool, super 90s. And it looks like I'm done with my first one. I they pop, that looks so rad. I might glue on a couple more pieces like 
but as far as I know, for the first one, I am done. It looks super groovy.
Okay, we are all collaged up. And now it's time to put our entire project together. So, as I mentioned earlier, we are gonna need some sort of a ribbon. Now you can use these all as separate little paintings or collages and hang them up on your wall. Or I think it would also be some cool postcards to mail to friends. But today I am going to make these into a garland to hang on my wall and get my house all summer ready. So I am spreading out my ribbon or twill tape and I'm gonna line these up the way I want them. So if you want them arranged, if you want them, like these have a little bit more yellow in them, so maybe I will do every other. You can do it however you'd like. So right now, I am just arranging them. I haven't glued anything together. But I have my glue here. And I'm gonna use a decent amount of glue for this part of the project, okay? So just on the very top, like three quarters of an inch, you wanna put a decent amount of glue so it can adhere to the twill tape or ribbon and you're gonna tap, tap, tap. And then you're gonna wait and let it dry after you're done with all of your banners. I'm doing mine right now, honey. Okay, so now we're just gonna wait for this to dry and then we're gonna hang it up and see our work on the wall. Over to the side. Over to the side, over to the side, over to the side, probably. That's what I meant. Thanks for being here with us. We had such a fun visit showing you this super 90s summer art project. Tune in to the rest of the Kid Made Modern IGTVs. They're all awesome and we hope to see you guys soon. All right, bye. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more fun inspiration and craft kits, check us out at kidmademodern.com. Thanks, and I can't wait to see you all again for the next video.